Jackets GM Yarmo Kekalainen joins the show now from Toronto. And Yarmo, by all accounts, the bubble that the NHL has established in Toronto and Edmonton, the two bubbles, everything seems to be working really well as planned. But we're on the outside. Can you take us inside just a bit and give us a little bit of a look at what life inside the bubble is actually like for players, team personnel, and everyone inside? Everything is, is pretty close to what we have on the road normally, except that we can't go out for a run or, or a walk. There's uh, iron fences around the hotel, and it's guarded heavily. So in a way, it feels like we're in a bit of a prison. But, but at the same time, the hotel is the same where we would stay on the road and the restaurants. And, and uh, it's, it's a little bit of a different experience. But I think the teams that adjust best and, and, uh, and uh, don't complain much and take a positive outlook on it. We'll uh, endure the best here. Yarmo, uh, you're talking about watching hockey all day, and you came to Columbus with the reputation of being as an elite uh, scout, knowing how to look for talent. And you drafted Pierre Luc Dubois in 2016. It raised a lot of eyebrows around because everybody thought Jesse Poriavi was going to be your guy. Watching him, that kind of performance he came in in Game 3, how gratifying was that for you? And how do you think his development has been so far? Well, I think it's work in progress. Its development has been good, and, and it's, it's got a long ways to go still. Uh, you know, that's the most exciting part of it. His, his potential is great, and, and he keeps developing and keeps improving. So, you know, the, I always say about this, you know, they talk about me drafting players, but... but First of all, it's the Blue Jackets that I like to think they always draft, but the credit goes to the scouting staff. Those are the guys that watch watch the players all year long, and, and they put in the hours, and they put in the miles. That's that's where the credit goes to is the scouting staff, and we have a great amateur scouting staff as well as a pro scouting staff, and, and they've done a tremendous job for us providing talent and depth. Yarmo, John Tortorella said something last night that he said before about his team. He said he's not sure if it's better in situations like this for a team to be young and dumb or to have experienced playoff hockey like this before. So what about the mix you've created with this team, and do you think that it's built right now for this type of hockey, playoff hockey and playoff success? We have a lot of young legs. We have we have enough speed. I think the the way we need to play it doesn't have, always have to be pretty, but it has to be effective. And uh, it it starts from our defense. We have to play very disciplined defensively and and keep the other team off the scoreboard and stay out of the penalty box and and then uh, uh, get get some of those dirty goals and 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 make it difficult for the opposing goalies to play and. And uh, then we have some skill and game-breaking ability as well. You're talking about playoff hockey. We're talking about Pierre-Luc Dubois, big body. He's a big body that the Jackets are hoping to see soon here. Josh Anderson, any updates or any, what's your impression as far as when he would be ready to make a comeback here with this Blue Jackets team? He's practicing with us. He's looking good. He, it's all up to him now to... Uh, when he feels 100% or close to it and he feels like he's ready to play, then they... Uh, doctors would hopefully clear him to play but it's four to six months with an injury like that when he got operated on his shoulder and and we're at a five month mark now just a little over and and we're hoping to hear that he's going to say that i'm ready to play and the doctors clear him and if, if they do he's going to be a huge boost for us